How's it going pre -cal kits today? We're going to look at one, four, building functions from functions. So we're going to take a function and we're going to build another function from it. You got it. Okay, uh, the first rules we're going to look at are the sum, difference, product, and quotient of functions. Um, these rules are noteworthy, guys. They are also a very basic. What it basically says is if you have f plus g of x, you take your f of x and you add to it your g of x. Ditto with subtraction. Ditto with multiplication. As well with your quotient rule. Okay? Um, the only thing you have to watch for in this guy is your g of x can't be zero because this is a foolish statement. That's foolish. You can't divide by zero. Who do you think you are? Well, I guess right now I'll tell you a joke. Uh, why was the math book always so sad? Because it has so many problems. I guess I can go down. Okay. Uh, defining new functions algebraically. So we're given f of x. Don't forget, guys, example. Examples are noteworthy. Examples are always noteworthy. And your g sub x is square root of x plus 1, right? And we're looking for the formulas of f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, f divided by g of x, and a g g of x, the great grandma. So let's look for f plus g. That when you take your f of g, or f of x, plus your g sub x, and we get x squared plus square root of x plus 1. And we're done. Our domain, well, our domain's not restricted on this guy, right? But it is restricted on this beast because we can't get a negative. So we set x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Or an interval notation from negative 1 to infinity. Let's do f minus g. It's the same thing as up above. But you subtract your two functions. And your domain is the same as above. See where my mistake was? That should be a bracket, guys. Bracket. Nothing too scary yet. <coughs> Maybe that cough scared you. I don't know. Let's do fg. Then we're going to take our x squared and times it by our x plus 1. Okay? Can't distribute that through. Um, our domain is going to be the same. Anything too scary yet? Let's do f divided by g. Now we put our x squared over our square root of x plus 1. Now for our domain, the only thing that's going to change is we can't be 0, right? So x is going to be not greater than or equal to, just greater than negative 1. So we use parentheses. And last but not least, we have gg, a gg. We have square root of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1. What's square root 2 times square root 2? Go, yell it. Can't hear you. Can't. It's, square roots cancel, right? So this is actually equal to just x plus 1. Okay? But now, let's think about this for a second. Our domain, you may say, oh, our domain's going to be all real. But now, wait a second, we have to look at our original domain and use that. Okay? You always have to use your original domains. I have to pause for a second. 
My Moby Pen battery will just not hold up. So it's... Okay, guys, I'm back. <clears throat> Composition functions. What this is, we're taking two functions, plugging one in for the other function, hence building a function from a function. Hence the title of the chapter. Okay. So, what has to happen though is your domain of f, f intersects the range of g, and you get this rule. This is it right here. This is the noteworthy bada boom bada bing uh, part. <clears throat> It's a way to take a function and go from that function onto another function and combine two functions into one function. Isn't this fun? Should. Okay. <clears throat> Here's a map of what it looks like. Your F composed with G, the fog. If you go from X to G of X and then from G of X to F of X, or take F of G of X, the same thing as the composition composed with what that little circle means okay the fog I know it may all seem kind of foggy right now but we'll get you there okay um, let's do it let's find the fog of, of X okay that same thing is saying F of G of X right make G of X red so that what that means is I'm going to take my f of x, and wherever I see an x, I plug in g of x. Okay? Okay? That, that's it. That, that was it. Now, for this one, we're going to do g of f of x. So, for this one, what we do is we take our f of x and wherever we see an x right we plug in our f of x that's all there is to it guys plugging in a function or another function let's do another one and then find the domains and then we'll be almost done okay so our, our gall, our g composed with f, is the same thing as g of f of x. So we take our f of x and plug it in for our x on g of x. Okay. So we get square root of x squared minus one, because we're plugging in f of x in for x on the g sub x. Now my domain. Remember you take this piece, you set greater than or equal to zero, because square root can't take the square root of a negative, not in the real world. And that's where we are, I think. Yes, we are. So you get x squared is greater than one. So x is uh, either greater than or equal to square root of one, or scroll down, x is less than or equal to negative square root of one. Right. But wait, there's more. Because you have to look at your original functions, right? You have to find the domain of each of these as well. Because if you can't plug it in your g of x, you can't plug it in your g uh, composed with f of x, right? Right, 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 right. I'm sorry. We have to look at your f of x. Because if we can't plug in your f of x, then you can't plug it into your g. But this domain's not restricted, right? For your f of x. So you can plug any number into f of x. As long as. Well, we already figured that part out. So we're actually good. B is going to be a little bit different. I know right now you guys are pressing. This tool is so confusing. I have no idea what's going on. That's fine, we'll get some practice. Now let's look at the fog. Let's lift the fog. Um, I'm gonna take my g sub x and plug it in for my f of x, okay? So I get square root of x, plug that in for x, squared minus one. Square root of x squared is just x, right? So this is actually x minus one. Now for our domain, 
you may be saying, well, if domain x minus 1, that's all real numbers. There's, you can plug anything into it, right? Right? Not so fast there, buddy. You have to look at your g sub x. Because if you can't plug something into your g sub x, you won't get an answer to put into your f of x. So you're restricted by what those pieces, parts are. Okay. So for our domain, we have to look at that square root of x. Well, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that is our domain, from 0 to infinity. Okay? Because we have to look at our original as well as what we currently have. I should have wrote these in that too. Square root of 1 to infinity and negative infinity to square root of 1 negative version. Okay. Two more slides. Time it. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Alright, this one find f and g such that a, h of s h of x equals f sub g of x. Okay. So what you, you're looking for is two functions. There's two ways to do this one. Way one is take this piece out of the square root, right? And say this is your g sub x. So you're saying g of x is x squared plus 5. And then when you take them out, you're left with an empty square root, right? So inside that, your f of x, you get that empty square root, and you have to fill it in with an x. These are tough. The other way you could have done it, okay, guys. Noteworthy because all examples are noteworthy. Even the last one we did, even though I didn't say so. So your notes. The other way of code down says, hey, there's an x squared here. So g sub x is x squared. Then when we cross that off, we're left with that blank spot plus 5. So our f of x is square root of that blank spot x plus 5. Okay? I know it's tricky, and a lot of you guys are probably saying, Miss Twiller, why do we have to know this? I'm so confused. What's going on? I'm not saying that to mock you, but just, just bear with me for a second. Last one, implicitly defined functions. That's where we take a function and we break it down into multiple functions. Or I shouldn't say that. We take something that's not a function and we break it into functions. Okay, because we're going to learn in calc that there's stuff you can do with functions that you can't do with relations. Okay. Okay, so let's try to take this relation. That's a general term for set of ordered pairs. Don't worry. And let's make it into a function. Okay, let's take a look at this equation. That's a circle, right? That's not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Let's make it into two functions, though. So what you do is you solve it. So I subtract my 4, subtract my 4, and subtract my y squared, subtract my y squared. Okay, so I get x squared minus 4 equals y squared, right? Right, 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 right. Okay. Now, what you do now is you take the square root of both sides, right? You need it plus or minus. Because when you take square root, solve something, you get the positive and the negative. And this just goes away. So you get positive x squared minus 4 equals y. And negative x squared minus 4 equals y. If you don't take my word for it, graph both on your calculator, and you will get a circle. Maybe we'll do that in front of class. Enjoy the rest of your day.